Hi there, I'm Mike, and what I have for you today is another just sort of playing around with toy videos, I guess. I got these in about a week ago, and I have yet to even crack them open because I wanted to do it on camera, and I just hadn't found the time. And tonight, it is currently just before midnight, and I thought enough is enough. I wanna play with these and I wanna get them open. Well, let's go ahead and just record it and see what comes out. Cause I honestly have no idea what I'm doing as a person and as a YouTuber. These are my latest acquisitions, I suppose, from the uh, Four Horsemen line, the Mythic Legions. If you are not familiar with the Mythic Legions, they are, uh, I mean, they're, they're a fantasy series. They do have like a whole mythos going on behind them. A lot of the figures, or some of the figures at the very least, are inspired by Masters of the Universe and He-Man. And part of that's because the Four Horsemen, the people that do this line, uh, were behind the 2002 series of He-Man stuff. They did a lot of the sculpting there. I've gotten a few Mythic Legions. Uh, I did a whole video on my last release, if you wanna go take a look at that. This one's gonna be similar. I'm not gonna do a full review. I'm just gonna kind of pop these open and show you what you get. Uh, these were part of their All-Star 3 wave, which what that means is there were, I think, four figures that fans voted on uh, to do again, and this is one of those. And then there were two new figures, and these are their homages to Shira and Hordak. I don't have all of the He-Man homages. I didn't get into Mythic Legions nearly in time to get any of those affordably. If you go look at the aftermarket prices for those, they're in the hundreds of dollars. And I mean, that's cool, but these are not worth hundreds of dollars. Uh, so let's go ahead and just kind of get them up. And I'll talk more about Mythic Legions. Uh, I'm gonna start with Hordak because uh, why not? And it's not Hordak, I guess I should say, but let's bring this over here. The actual name here is Lord Dragul. He does have a whole bio here. If you wanna just kind of stop and read it. It's too long for me to read. Uh, there's, there's too much going on there. Normally I do like to read the bios because I like to read. One of the things I do like about these is the, the packaging is very collector friendly. As you can see, I didn't have to take any tape off. This just comes off the bag. There's some really nice artwork there. Here we have the figure itself. He has a, a little cape back there. It's very reminiscent of the Horde style, which I like. Uh, he's got a little ax right here. And there's just a ton of accessories in this bag. So let's go ahead and get Dragul out, which I, you know, I guess I could call him by his actual name, uh, even though we all know he is Hordak. Uh, normally I clip these open, but I try to save the boxes for these. And it, it's weird because I'm not planning on ever selling these, but I do know they have a fairly high resale value because of the nature of these. And part of that is because uh, when Four Horsemen sell these, they, they kind of put them up for pre-order. They, they make them all, all the people that ordered them, they make them. And then that's, that's pretty much it. If you didn't order it during that time, uh, it's all aftermarket. And what that means is people go, you know, they'll go on Big Bad Toy Store and they'll see that you know, these figures are going for like 50, 60, uh, you know, dollars more than that in some cases. And they go like, how do you have so many Mythic Legions? How these are so expensive. And the thing is, they're, they're really, they're not that expensive. This is crooked here. And I think, there we go. Yeah, a, a lot of these parts are modular and they're actually intended to come off, so they're very easy to fix like that. But they're they're not expensive if you buy these right. And I know I say this pretty much every time I mention Mythic Legions, but I wanna get the word out. So, so there was a period of time, I think it was like a month, where anyone could order these. This figure cost me 35 bucks. Uh, which is a far cry away from the $55 he usually goes for on like Big Pet Toy Store. So he's, he's really not that expensive considering that it's pretty much a made to order figure. A lot of it's hand painted, hand crafted. I would never pay the aftermarket prices for these, but I don't have any problem paying the actual in stock prices. One of the problems I have with these, there's a lot of stuff and no instructions, I guess is my, my biggest complaint here. If you don't watch a lot of videos with people that have been doing this for a long time, um, it, it's really hard to kind of figure out what some of the stuff is. Oh, I should probably, I haven't been doing this, any of this on camera. I don't even know if any of this is usable. Uh, I might just repeat any of this, all the stuff I just said. But let's take a look at this guy. Let's take a look. I got it all. So there's some holes back here and I'll get into those. He's a nice shade. The helmet is really good. 
You can see there's not a lot down there. A lot of the stuff is removable. So if you don't like it, you can just get rid of it. I feel like his legs are, are weird. I feel like they're warped or something. I don't know. Like they do have a, a good amount of articulation, but I feel like there's some warpage there. So let's take a look at some of these accessories. He's got these shoulder pauldrons and they do kind of plug right into the back right here. Like so. So if you want him to have the shoulder pauldrons, you can. Uh, now what I'm going to do is get this thing on. I don't know if I can doing this on camera. I will certainly try. So I don't know if there's an actual right or wrong way to do it. I think this is the right way to do it. Does it fold back or, or before? Just line that up. Oops. Dropping the shoulder is a very important part of the process here. So it's probably actually a good idea to get the cape actually through this hole, I guess, on the pauldron before trying to put it into the back. So let's do that. Push it in like so. There we go. Oops, nope, that did not work. Nope, and then his head just popped off. All right, that's good enough. Now we will attempt to sort of do the same on the other side. Okay, there we go. So there we are, now we have Hordak. He's got his shoulders on. He's got his cape on. Yeah, I don't know how his cape's supposed to go. Maybe it goes the other way, but I don't mind it like that. Kind of tucked under. Looks pretty good. But if you don't want the helmet, you can just pop it on with uh, with this head, which is a, a little more Hordaki, I suppose, right there. I think that looks pretty good. I actually, I like that a lot. I'm definitely gonna kind of have mine like that. So. He comes with a couple weapons here. Let's take a look at that. So obviously we get his helmet and it's got a little dragon on there, which is pretty good. The visor doesn't move or anything, but it's there. He comes with this. I'm not entirely sure what this is. It's got a little slot on the back. Like it's got a hole there. It's got a little slot there. I'm not. Like, does it, does it go on here? Oh, does it, oh, there we go. I think it goes on there. Kind of turn into a, a, a little kind of skull axe thing. I like that. So I was kind of figuring stuff out. I'm sure I can find pictures online. So he comes with the skull axe. He comes with the crossbow because the original one came with the crossbow. That was like a big thing. He comes with this shield and there's a little handle for it so you can pop the handle on there and you can have them hold that shield. This is a pretty standard shield they release with a lot of their stuff. I don't think it's a great shield. It's got a lot of missing sparks here, but it's cool for um, just looks purposes. Uh, and then he comes with a little weapons belt and you can get the weapons belt around him. So if you wanna kinda put the ax through the little hole here and have him kinda hold that instead. So I'm gonna give him this rad ax is what I'm gonna do. And then let's give him the shield. I know the traditional part of me is like, give him, give him the crossbow. But I just, I never liked the whole crossbow thing. There we go. So I'm going to have him kind of hold it like that. So that is going to be my Hordak for now. He's got all this other stuff like that. And we'll leave that there. Next, we're going to bring out the Shira. Her real name is Dorina Honoris. Same kind of back thing there. And again, if you want to read that, you can. So the last one they did was for like a, it was like a vampire set. And there were a bunch of different vampire people from their vampire world. And then they also had like on the, on the elven side or forest side, there was like a centaur and a moose and like this, uh, this fawn guy or something. There's a lot of really cool people. And all of those, well, for the most part, they were like 35 bucks for a typical figure. I think the moose was like 60 bucks. Uh, so the, while they, again, are expensive, uh, they're not as expensive as they would be on the Big Bad Toy Store. Because what happens is, you know, they'll put these up for pre-order for a month. And literally anybody can pre-order as many as they want. But that is how, like, uh, Big Bad Toy Store buys them. They don't, they don't get a special deal as far as I know. They order them just like everybody else orders them. Once the Four Horsemen guys turn off a sale, like, that's, that's it. Ooh, she needs... We got some paint chipping there. Before I mess with any of the posing here, I need to hit it with a, a hair dryer because that, while it's it's chipping pretty bad, but it's also 
very, very tight. Anyway, so I'm, I'm gonna put her down here. So again, it's not scalping because like no, nothing's being taken away from people. Like it's not like someone's going into a store and just uh, buying all of them on the shelf to put, put them up for more. Anyone can buy, oops, <laughs> anyone can buy as many as they want for whatever reason they want. Uh, so places like Big Bad Toy Store or whatever, they'll they'll buy a bunch of them and a year later or so, uh, it seems it takes them about a year to actually come out with these. So once they're up for, pre for pre-order, about a year, I think I ordered these about a year ago or so, maybe a little bit longer than that. If you wanna buy these cheaply, that's how you do it. When they go up for in-store in orders, buy them off storehorseman.com and, and that's it. So the, this is this is her actual human head. This is the uh, the helmeted head there. It's kind of an elf head. I'm actually not a big fan of that. So we're gonna pop that off like that, and we're going to pop her on. Oh, I love that. Look at that. That is great. Oh, she does not have a what? It, what is going on there? That's not right. That is just weird. Yeah, the portions of her, like her boobs are weird. Like, I don't know what's happening with this. But let's take a look at what else she comes with. So just like Hordak, she comes with a cape. That cape has the four holes as well. The holes are weirdly off center, which sucks. She's got these, uh, these pauldrons. This is actually the second time I've gotten a cape like this from them and the holes aren't right. Like this one, I think should be over here. These are, I think, too close together. Uh, and it's gonna make the cape essentially hang weird. Uh, also, these holes are very small, like super. Look at how small these holes are versus the size of these that they're supposed to go through. Like, you're just gonna rip this trying to get through it. Well, that kind of worked. Let's get, I'm gonna pop her head off so I can get the cape on better. Push that in there. There we go. And then we we'll take this. And then we take that, we push that through like so. And so now we have her cape weirdly bunched up at the back, but from the front, I guess it looks okay. Let's get her head back on here. There we go. So we have our princess of power. She comes with a sword. We'll go ahead and pop that in her hand. And then she also comes with this shield. Now, while the figure is new, the molding isn't and the weapons really aren't. Pretty much all of these have been reused before. That's kind of how these, these work, is they, they make new characters by repainting and remolding and reusing other parts because everything's pretty much modular. So there we have uh, She-Ra and Hordak, also known as Lord Dragul, and I don't even remember her name anymore. And that just leaves the last guy. This is Torion. He is a Minotaur, as you can see here. He is one of the figures that fans voted on. So uh, I never got this the first time around. There's also a skeleton guy. I was between this and the skeleton guy. And I don't know, something about the, the, blue, the blue Minotaur just kind of spoke to me. Now, if you're watching this and you go, oh man, I really do kind of want to get into Mythic Legions. I do, I recommend waiting. I mean, you can buy them on Big Bad Toy Store or whatever, but I recommend waiting. Pretty soon they're going to be doing a, a All-Star Wave 4 which again, people are gonna vote on more figures that have been popular in the past to kind of bring back. They also typically do what are called in-stock sales, which basically what happens is, uh, you know, people will order a bunch of figures or they'll make extras just in case things happen in the production process and need to replace stuff for people, um, but then they don't get replaced. So uh, they'll make extras and then they'll sell those extras. So in-stock sales are great. It's a great way to get cheap ones. Those they usually announce before they do them by like a week or so. They'll do like just new, straight up new figures uh, or all-star waves like this. So I would say if you are interested in these, just wait, uh, just 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 be patient. Oops. Whoop. So this guy does not come with an alternate head, but I will say this little piece, oh dang, I meant to take this off. This little piece right here is actually a piece They've reused a couple times. It came with both Panthor and Cringer. Uh, it's kind of fun to see them reuse them 
for this. I like the animal people. The animal people are fun. Look at these. I like the hooves this guy has. It behooves you. It's kind of fun. I don't have any characters like that so far. I love the blue metallic sheen. Um, this is just a really cool looking bull guy. Now these are removable as well because everything's modular. So if they're different horns, you've got a different one you want or you want to adjust them if you want them kind of up or back for some reason. I don't know. Um, you can obviously I think for like forward is best, but uh, you can adjust these however you want. It's kind of a, the cool thing you can do. So it does come with shoulders as well like this. He comes with a long pole. Let's go ahead and get this here. On that pole is a tip. Now, again, these poles, they've used them a couple times. I've got a bunch of these long poles and there's a bunch of different modular tips. So there's like war moles and things like that. So this is just a super long kind of spear, like a trident spear, but with a ball on the end. I don't really know what's going on there. One of the fun things that I haven't even researched even a little bit is there's a whole mythos to these characters. Like everyone's got their own factions and things like that. Let's get his shoulder pauldrons on. So the ba basically they just kind of go into the back like this. So there he goes. He looks beefier already. Oh, he does have his sword. I think I kind of like that sword better. Oops. I think I like that sword better than this super long, weird kind of pole thing. So let's go ahead and give him that. That's a better option. So he definitely has a color scheme which I think is pretty rad. And then of course he does have a shield. It is pretty similar to the other shield, but not the same. This one, instead of having a thing you hold, it's got a little wrist thing. And I think that's part of the 1.0. So I think that's how old this figure is, is that uh, it has this little wrist clip instead of a, a thing you kind of hold on to. So kind of hold it like that. And there he goes. He also does come with one of these. So let's, let me get these. So there we go. I don't even know if there's anything <laughs> usable in all this of me just talking and playing with toys. Uh, but these are the three Mythic Legions that I got from the All-Star 3 wave. There were a couple others I didn't. Like I said, there's a skeleton guy. There's a huge troll guy for like 110 bucks and he's absolutely gigantic. Um, I didn't get any of those. I just, I didn't want to break the bank. So I just got these three. Uh, this was about, I don't know, like $100 or so. Uh, after shipping, it was a little bit more than that. But I feel like you know, for the amount of accessories you get, uh, I, I do kind of want to fix that elbow before I mess with it, but I definitely appreciate these figures a lot. Let me show you some of the other ones I like in case you haven't seen the other video. I mean, it's hard to just pick some. I like them all, but this is the Panthor guy. He's basically, his name's Perplor, but he is essentially Panthor. Uh, I also have this really red Viking. Not, he's not a Viking, he's a dwarf king. Right there, King like Blank's Bromden Iron Jaw or Iron Beard or something like that. He's actually one where he came with the cape, but the cape's kind of messed up like hers. I might go back and try to get it on him now that I've kind of figured that out. It doesn't look terrible. And then uh, the last one I'll kind of show off here. This is Chrono. This is basically Trap Jaw. Uh, oops, <laughs> that's a problem with his little crown thing. He's a skeleton man, but definitely themed and colored around looking like a... Uh, trap jaw from masters of the universe and i absolutely i love it he, he he's one of my favorites just because of how ridiculous it is but definitely is a good homage to master of the universe again there's others uh i've got the one for cringer and actually that's it that's all the master of the universe ones i have the rest are i've got a cool angel chick i've got uh, a couple of goblins which are really rad and i've got some big guys uh let me get one of the big guys to kind of show you the difference here this guy's name is Agamedes. He is an ogre. He's not a troll. Trolls are even bigger. So you can see how much taller he is than the other figures. <laughs> He's pretty tall, especially compared to little dwarf right here. And there's also like goblins. Uh, I'm just gonna pull everything down. There's there's also little goblin guys. This is, this is a thwomp or thump. I think it's, it's thump or thump or something like that. If you get them when they're in stock or on pre-order, and it sucks for the weight, but it's totally worth it in the end to drop less money on something that's just as cool. I really like these guys a lot. I haven't bought any recently. Like I, I bought these three a year ago and I just got them now. I didn't buy any from the last two waves. There just weren't any that made me want to drop the money. I think also I'm sort of, I don't know, I wanna say, I don't wanna say I'm over them, but uh, they sort of lost their luster. I've got a couple, I like them. But it's nothing I want to go all in on. I mean, especially you can see like these are the same shoulders here. Uh, there's 
you'll you'll start noticing a lot of reused parts you can see his uh this thing it's not broke it just comes off but they did announce that they're doing like a cosmic legions one which is basically mythic legions but instead of being like fantasy stuff it's space and i think i'm gonna have to jump on that when it drops for sure but in the meantime these are some of the mythic legions i've got let me know do you want to see me actually review like a, an actual full-on review one i don't really have a review for these i have to play with them i have to fix some stuff uh to really get a good opinion on them instead of kind of an off the cuff kind of thing uh, i feel like they deserve more than that but i might pick one to review I don't know which one I would pick. I might put that up for a vote on my channel. So yeah, let me know down in the downstairs area. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the people here on screen for supporting me on Patreon. Since this isn't one of my main three Patreon type videos, I'm actually gonna put everyone's name on here. What you're seeing on the screen is everyone that supports me on Patreon, no matter what level. Thanks a lot. It means so much to me that you guys do that. If you wanna see your name on lists like this, you can head over to my Patreon. If that's not your thing down in the downstairs area, there are a couple different ways you can help the channel out that are free, up to and including liking, sharing, subscribing, hitting the bell for more notifications, all that stuff goes a long way for helping out the channel. And with that, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for getting this far and I'll see you later. Bye.